welcome to another edition of the Above the Bridge podcast. I'm your host, Thaddeus. Want to take time to shout out our sponsors. First up, we have Defend Hawaii. If you check them out, check on their website, defendhawaii.com. If you go to Windward Mall, they have a store, no one. They have uh, brand new drops coming out for the fall. They're also doing a lot of stuff with the University of Hawaii football team. So go check out what they got going on now. Uh, defendhawaii.com promo code ATB pod upon checkout. You'll receive 15% off your entire purchase order. Next, we have IREP Detail Supply. They have a store in Temple Valley Shopping Center. If you check them out, they have everything you need to detail your car. Um, I use it on my truck. Go check them out. IREPDetailsupply.com is their website. And if you use promo code ATB pod upon checkout, you'll receive 15% off your entire purchase order. Also for our sponsorship, we have Hawaii Candy Factory. If you go to hawaiicandyfactory.com, use promo code ATB pod upon checkout. They have a bunch of snacks. You see their stuff everywhere. Noms, it's uh, lihimui gummies, uh, lemon peel on certain candies. Uh, my favorite is the peaches. Go check them out, hawaiicandyfactory.com. Use promo code ADBPOD upon checkout. You receive 10% off your entire purchase order. And for our new sponsor, we have Medi Mushroom Hawaii, uh, Medicinal Mushrooms Hawaii. And they've been uh, putting out these tinctures of uh, lion's mane mushrooms. If you don't know what lion's mane does, it's known to increase energy, focus, memory, and um, improve your mood. Usually takes about three to five, three to five days. You take three drops of this. You can either put it under your tongue or you, for me, I put it in my coffee every morning and it's uh, definitely been changing my attitude and putting me in a better mood every day. I t also take it before the podcast because it helps me focus with what I'm trying to say. So if you go on their website, it's um, medmushroomhawaii.com and use promo code ATB pod upon checkout. You'll receive, oh, all capitals. You'll receive 40% off your entire first tincture of lion's mane. Go check them out. Aloha. All right, this week on my show, I'm having a guest that's from Maui. He does what I do. He's a nightclub promoter, and he also runs a um, wedding business. Is that what it is, a wedding business? Uh, entertainment company. Uh, oh, okay, weddings, okay. Property events, yeah. Okay, and um, somebody that I'm close with, somebody that has taken care of me, Many times when we were in Maui and somebody that's very important to me and um, yeah, being in the industry, uh, I know it's a crazy time for him, but welcome to the show. This is Sava, a.k.a. DJ Illin. What's up, brother? <laughs> What's going on? Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming on, No, I really on, feel famous. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you're more famous than me, man. <laughs> no way, man. Famous in bad ways, I guess. <laughs> so man you've been having an interesting last uh couple of weeks huh? it's been pretty crazy in maui and um i know i reached out to you the day after everything happened and i was happy to get a message back or a text back knowing that you guys are all good and safe but brah how's it been up there man um it's been pretty crazy you know um it's been a week already and it's still kind of hard to to accept what happened um, I myself and families have lost homes up there. Um, and it's just one of those things that every day you open the news, it, it's always something bad, you know, and it hasn't reached its peak yet. Like it hasn't reached its, uh, its peak of, you know, it getting worse and worse and worse, not to be negative, but it's just people are just waiting for some kind of, um, closure, solution answers. You know, there's a lot of questions being asked, um, and it's just been crazy, but, you know, it's, it's been really heartwarming that the community has been getting together and, you know, they're not waiting for something to happen. You know, it's Lahaina strong, right? They're, they're getting together. They're, they're doing what, you know, 
they're not waiting for people to help them. They're just, they're just getting it done themselves. And it's just so amazing, you know, and that's kind of what's been helping everybody through all this. Um, there's a lot of people who they just don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. And the community is just, you know, even if they don't have the answer, they're like, Oh, come with me, bro. We'll go figure it out. You know, um, let me call somebody or let me try to, you know, put a text out there, shout out on Instagram, you know, they, they try to get answers. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been rough in the fact of just really accepting it. And I think most people are in the same boat. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's just been really wild, man. I'm glad that people have been checking in. I mean, people from all over the world, this, this has reached like China, Japan, Europe, you know, they're like, are you alive? I'm like, ah, I'm more or less, you know, dead on the inside, but you know, <laughs> Um, I told him it's a different, different area that has burned down. As you guys know, the Haina, right? Um, yeah. It's, it's our tourist attraction. It's our Waikiki here. And, you know, it's, it's definitely a, a pretty grave loss for us. And yeah, just going back to that again, it's just really hard to accept it because it's, it's just a town that's full of families, memories. I mean, we all have ties there. You know, um, everyone in Maui has been on Front Street for Halloween. I mean, numerous events that you guys did in the past before I was yeah. even 21, you know. Um, <laughs> Hope you didn't come to those. <laughs> oh, man. If I could only sneak in back then. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, just events that brought people together. And ever since I started DJing at Dirty Monkey and, you know, just being um, part of their family there. I started to see more of what Lahaina was about. You know, it was about family. It's about everybody just connecting. And you just, it wasn't unity. You know, the island has it. But for some reason, Lahaina, you just, you just feel it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you just, you go there and they know. They'll be like, hey, you're not from here. Like, oh, how do you even know that? Now nah, we know, you know, that's how you can tell they're really close knit. Yeah. And, um, you know, that, that gives a really heartwarming feeling, I guess. And it helps, it helps um, show people that, you know, Lahaina does does have strong ties with the community and everyone else. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's it's been difficult just because of everything going on. You know, we still hear stories. I'm, I know you guys see it, you know. Um, they're still looking for people. Um, people are this whole, you know, all these conspiracy theories, which is crazy. But they're um, coming out of the woodwork with that stuff, huh? Yeah, bro, lasers from the sky. Yeah, you know, <laughs> some of it makes sense, but some of them is like, bro, what uh -huh. are you on to think about that? <laughs> some Austin Power stuff, you know, lasers on with on on sharks freaking heads. You know, <laughs> yeah, it, it's crazy, but you know, it's it's it goes back to you know us being in the unknown, right? We we don't know what happened, what's going on, and um, just in the news recently, um, you know, you just always see these questions being asked and it somewhat gets answered in a way that people can't accept. I'm not trying to get political, you yeah, know, it's yeah. just, just something that, that I know, you know, even my friends in Oahu have been asking too, like, hey, you know, I heard about this, I heard about that. And um, yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy, man. Like I could tell you some stories behind the scenes. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not what you see and what's going on. And, you know, we even hear, like we see, what the news doesn't report you know yeah. what the news reports is what they want to report which is you know that's that's news right yeah um, definitely but when you get into the thick of it and you start talking to these people and you know sorry i'm going all over the place because it's, it's just it's just so much all good to, bro all good <laughs> you know? um like i was talking to i guess so our hotel right um they're they take in people now we started taking in fema and we started taking in uh regular locals you know from um the highness side and uh was talking to this one guy really cool guy you know um he was uh i guess he was a programmer a computer programmer um he lived in uh front street apartments which is right by where the the what do you call it the outlets was where it burned down and um you know he was i was like you know asking questions like um my job is to you know assist the guests so i like to get to know them because you know it's like they have a hard time and not everyone's talking about it right yeah. And for me, I, I feel that a good way to get it off your chest is to talk about it, ask questions, you know, not, not pry, but, you know, like, oh, so where were you? How did it happen? And, um, you know, I'm not going to go into his whole story. It's long, but basically the gist of it, like, you know, he was sleeping. There was no warnings. Um, there was no sirens. Nothing told him. There was no signs that, that you know, hey, a fire is coming, right? Like, it's going to burn down Front Street. It was more of like, oh, 
you know, he's seen, um, he was explaining it as when he opens and closes his eyes, right? Like it was, it was dark light, dark light. That's all the ash, right? The ash and cinder in the air and whatnot. And um, he, he didn't realize it until it kept happening frequently. So he got up, he went outside, he seen smoke, you know, we used to have cane fires and we used to have, you know, small little brush fires, whatever. Yeah, yeah. He didn't yeah. think anything of it. Um, then his neighbor came down and was like, hey, hey we got to, you know, we got to get out of here. He's like, well, what's going on, right? Um, so they go outside and uh, he sees like this blaze, right? Like, like if from his window compared to being outside, he's like the whole, everyone, everything around him was engulfed in fire. And then I was like, oh my God. And, you know, he was, he was telling me, which was so interesting, like how hot the ground was and the area was. He had plants that was outside. And then he was telling me like, oh, you know, there's cinders that, that are like little comets just going all over the place. You know, you had like 50 to what, 70 mile per hour wind, right? Yeah. So there were cinders hitting like uh, these palm trees that, that he was growing. And uh, it was crazy because he said every time he put the, you know, he would pour water on it, the thing would just, the thing would just come back, you know, it would just light up on fire because it was so hot all around the ground was just so hot. And uh, he was explaining to me, I think he just went back yesterday. They started allowing people back, residents and, you know, uh, just general public. And um, he went back to the place of where it happened. I don't know if he was supposed to be there or not, but um, he went back and uh, he was explaining, he was telling us like uh, he had tools, right? Like mechanic tools. And um, he said like there were his pry bars and his ratchets were so melted to the ground. It, it, it looked like it was there for hundreds of years. You know, oh, wow. and he said sockets were like melted, like, like, you know, cheese and fire. Like it was, it was crazy. Um, you know, and then uh, his story was, was about, he tried to, uh, uh, one of his friends had, I guess it was a son or nephew that was what by Mala, right? Mala is down by Kennery. Um, yeah. He had one of, uh, I don't know if it was a son or well, anyways, there was someone that this lady that lived in his apartment complex wanted to get and they couldn't get to him. Um, I don't know if they got out or not. I, I didn't clarify that, but he was saying just even getting there was so crazy because the roads were blocked. People were just chaotic. Um, he brought his truck, but eventually he had to abandon it because it just, everybody just didn't know where to go, you know? Yeah. Um, and he was, all he kept saying was it was just fire all around. It was just, everything was ablaze, you know? Um, and I've talked to, you know, my family here that got out, uh, five of their homes burnt down. And it was the same thing. Like they, they were sitting down in their house and, um, you know, they, they, they saw smoke, just, you know, just like, oh, okay, this was a fire. Um, but they went and sat down. Then they said uh, a couple minutes later, people were running up the street, Lahaina Luna, Lahaina Luna, uh, you know, uh, Lahaina town. And um, yeah, they, they just told me, let's go, let's go, let's go. And they're like, well, what's going on? You know, they didn't know. They're like, let's, let's, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. There's a fire coming. Um, and, you know, they just got all their things. They got a whole, they all live in, in like a, like a small vicinity, right? Uh, close to the cul-de-sac. And uh, they all got each other. They took what they could, their cars. Um, they lost a few cars and, you know, they, they got out of there. And those videos that you guys see online with, uh, you know, like the guys, I think it was a to Tacoma or the one, the truck where he's like heavy breathing and yeah. just, you know, left and right. That's, that's what they described. There was like, it, it was just like being in hell, you know, they, they don't know where to go. And, people running all over it was just it's chaos man um you know and you hear all these stories and that, that is what i'm saying like what the news doesn't tell you is is the the experience it, they show you videos but when you hear it and you you talk to people that was in it, it it's so surreal you know like oh, yeah. how 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 is this happening you know um then you hear a lot of things about kids and it's just man it, it's it's so so depressing you know um not trying to be negative the podcast but you know it's just all good. it's something but... that you know people people should should hear you know the stories from if they have families here friends hit them up and then ask them about it and you know and they'll be willing to talk about it because it's just something that it's good to get off their chest and it's good to hear about it because then you realize what was really going on right um yeah. sorry i might get repetitive i don't remember what i said <laughs> too well, but, <laughs> all good bro um yeah, it's definitely crazy, man. Like just, just seeing it. And I actually got to go down. So what was it? Last week, Friday, they opened the road. And um, I said, I'm not going to get political or anything. But, you know, uh, me and my coworker and my auntie went up. 
So they're like, okay, you can go in with Lahaina residents. Um, we had a full truck full of, of water, sodas, ice. Like, you know, my Suburban was full to the brim. So um, we got in and uh, we entered the area that was, that was pretty much burned. And there was a lot of people there, you know, a lot of people, families just checking out their homes. And it was crazy because the top side of Lahaina was, was fine, but uh, above the bypass was fine. But when you go below the bypass, it was, everything was just burnt, man. It was it, like how people described it, it was like being in a bomb zone. You know, it was just, everything is melted. You just see power lines on the ground and just debris, just the rubble, you know, just, just straight up rubble. Um, and it just was so crazy because the more you walk down, when they let people in, um, you could see people like leaning on their homes that was once there. And I was talking to a couple of them, you know, like, hey, man, you are right. Like, are you guys fine? You know, and you, they're just you can tell they're just lost, you know, like 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 a lost soul. Right. Just a ghost that yeah. lingers around, you know, like it was it was crazy, man. Like You feel the energy of of just just the the sorrow and um just the destruction you know that that happened there it just took a lot away from people and um it was definitely a, a trip to see that uh, that was pretty much my whole week you know um the hotel's been giving back uh we've been doing me and my sister and uh friends have been donating our time every day um you know we try to take a break for ourselves but it, it's definitely hard because there's so, you, you know, you feel like everything you do is not enough, right? In this case, you know, we give like a whole day. It feels like we're not doing enough. And yeah. um, it's just that that's that's how the community is getting together. It's it's just that crazy. You know, they, wow, I mean, they, they got they got Vegas, California, you know, Texas. There, there's containers coming in off the wide. Um, we got these big cargo planes that just landed today. It's just, it's amazing, man. Um, you know, and there were things like... Uh, um, the first, so FEMA didn't come in until, what was it, two days? It was two days before they came in. And um, it was it was nuts because in within 24 hours, bro, talk about help, man. Like people were just gathering with, within 24 hours, just, just people were flooding with water, diapers, clothes. Like this is how fast the community reacted, right? They couldn't get a hold of loved ones. Like people mobilized so quick. They just couldn't wait for the government. And um, yeah. it was just, man, just it's that alone just, just shows you that the community is here for each other. You know, the people, you know, we have lost something. We've lost a lot, but the community is there to, to pick us up, right? You know, we've fallen down and they're there to pick each other up. And that's, I think, what keeps people going, right? I think that's what um, makes people believe that it's going to be okay. Uh, which I believe it will be. It's just going to take some time to heal and just more things need to come to light so people can have closure, I guess you could say, right? Yeah. Um, I wasn't able to see my house. Because uh, you, you had my, property in, in Lahaina, right? Front Street, right on Front Street. So oh. uh, by 505, so right up the road. So right where Main Front Street was, where they do the, um, the uh, what do you call it? The Halloween, uh, yeah. right up the road. It's like maybe one minute drive, not even one minute drive, like a five minute walk, I guess. But right up there, and for the fire to climb that far, it was it was nuts, you know. Uh, my tenants, you know, I asked them like, what, what? Well, first off, it was it was crazy because uh, the next day, I was going to work. I made it to work. My sister called me and she said, "Hey, uh, Brad is one of our tenants, right?" He's like, "Yeah, hey, I just saw Brad. He's 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 at Safeway and he's just he's just covered in all black." I'm like, "What the hell? Like, how did he get here?" You know. Um, so we have a house and a property in Kihei which is uh, close to where that Safeway was. And we let them stay there, you know, it was him and a couple other tenants. And um, it, it was it was nuts because he was just covered in black. Like he, he just got out, you know? Um, but I asked him too, I'm like, how, how did you guys know that there was a fire? And uh, they were telling me the same thing. They were just like, oh, we saw smoke and it was like, whatever, right? There's, there's no warning, nothing. Then um, I was like 10 or 15 minutes later, uh, they all started knocking and shit, like all the rest of the times, like, dude, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. And then by the time they got out, he told me the fire moved so fast, like within minutes from them looking back and seeing it again, it already reached the house. Like they, they just, they all got together and just bolted, you know, they couldn't get anything. Um, and you know, the wind was a huge factor of it. It just, yeah. it just, bro, it just spread like crazy. The cinders was 
all over. I mean, that guy described it as like little, little comets, little, you know, little meteors hitting everything. And um, yeah, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't see my place. They won't allow us into Front Street because that was a heavily, heavily uh, devastated and, you know, it's not clear deemed safe zone or whatever. Um, yeah. But, you know, just seeing the, the house and video, one of my tenants was able to get in and he took a video um, and man, it's just, it's just crazy to see it. Like I can tell you firsthand just to see what was, what was yours, just, just rubble, you know, and all these people, that's all that they had. It, it's just, man, it's just, it's crazy. You know, um, a lot of these homes, a lot of Nana and Tata's, right. Uh, some of them don't even believe in banks, right. Old school, they keep their money in the house. Uh, oh, you know, shit. they have everything sentimental, you know, like my family was saying, and a lot of people, you know, I've talked to too, it's pictures and uh, birth certificates, passports, just, man, it's just, that that's what hasn't set in, right? And there's a lot of people that, that can't go to their home and and see that because it's still unsafe, understandably, you know, um, but it's just that unknown, right? That That's that's what makes people wonder. And that's the thing that's going on with, um, you know, everyone that they're still trying to find and locate. And I'm sure that, you know, it's just, yeah, I, I'm sure that, the news is not going to get better, but yeah. there needs to be some kind of closure in order to move on to the next step, right? Uh, people just need to um, have some kind of information because it's been very vague with us, you know. Yeah. Um, even yeah, as we far as like hear what what the news is telling us and social media and social media is very skewed in certain directions. Is I don't know what to believe. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean. Social media has been showing a lot, um, you know, of general photos before and afters, which is which is accurate. Um, but it's 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 what you see and hear, like I said, from the people. You know, they show you these videos that you some of them you can't even post online because of how graphic it is. You know, um, it's just man, it's this is just a wild thing to uh, to go through and and deal with. But like I said, I, I've never seen you know, anything so heartwarming than the community getting together like this. Like, they're not waiting for FEMA or Red Cross, bro. Like, they're just, they're just, they're, look, bro, get out of my way, pretty much, you know? Like, yeah. get out, you know, they try to stop them from coming into line. And what do they do? They, they put boats all the way back in the Philly side, you know? These guys are unstoppable, <laughs> you know? You have guys going with dirt bikes, dropping off um, supplies from the mountainside. You know, it, it's it's just amazing, man. Just, just so amazing. Even till right now, you know, you have people just trucking stuff in. They don't care about work. They just... They just want to help these people, you know. Um, I want to do that, but uh, work would definitely let me go. <laughs> you know, I did that. <laughs> you can be fired, and you... <laughs> Man. I mean, I, I, I get, I try to give as much time as I can. You know, just like that fundraising event we did on Saturday. You know, give back music, right? Um, that was uh, in Maui High School, and it was great, man. Like, just you see all these people, and you just give them something that makes them happy, right? I was playing old school. You know, so what did uh, you do? Games. You brought your DJ equipment down there and, and set up and kind of just played music for people all day, Kai? Yeah, um, we walked up. So one of our chefs at, at, um, at the hotel uh, was part of that fundraising program and they were taking in stuff. And um, I went over there, I talked to them. I talked to the people in charge and it was crazy because, you know, normally like when you go to something like that, right? You want to give to the community and they're, they're taking stuff in. You would think that everyone was together, right? Um, but it wasn't, it was like, you had Red Cross, you had FEMA, you had Maui High, like you had to go to three different people. And I was like, man, this is crazy. Like, I, I just want to donate my time, you know, but they have to talk to this person, this person. Um, and it just it's made it so difficult. <laughs> Bro, it was nuts, dude. Like, it, it's just, it, it was just so much like, you can't, you can do this, but you can't do this. You, you can't do that. But you, you know, it's was, it was just a lot of back and forth. And eventually we finally was like, okay. Uh, we can set up here, right? Okay, cool. Say so, yeah, I was basically a tent. Um, I had my friend Cass, who I met from uh, Dirty Monkey, and um, she helped me set up. She brought her keyboard. She started singing, and then I set up, you know, my speakers. Let her tie into it, and a lot of people were messaging me like, "Hey, can I come down?" But we had to shut down because, like, um, what was it? it? Was Red Cross that came, and it was just like I said, too many entities, right? So it's pretty much like, oh, you know, you guys need to shut this down. And we're like, no, we why though? Mission. And, it, it's just nobody knows you know like i was asking questions and people were just like hey you know so i was like hey I, you know if if nobody's like grabbing my equipment and throwing it on the ground to get out i'm just gonna keep playing because everyone was requesting <laughs> music 
you know, yeah. I played the electric slide and people were dancing. Like, man, it's, you know, you, you try to do good and just something gets in the way of it. You know, I, I'm not talking shit about that in particular, but that situation, you would think that everything would be harmonious, right? Yeah. But um, there's a lot of moving uh, things behind the scenes, you know? Um, there's a lot that's going on that's preventing that. You know, people giving clothes to, um, I was hearing from Red Cross and War Memorial, uh, or was it female? I think it was Red Cross and they were turning away clothes and stuff. Understandably, they have a lot, but it's things like that. Like the organization was, was to me and from a lot of my friends doing this still, it's very unorganized, right? So like, let's yeah. say you bring clothes and they've been telling people like, oh, uh, we don't want that. We're not going to take that. Well, I mean, give an option, right? Like, like, okay, hey, you know, we're not taking clothes, go bring it to the church, go give them some information because it's going to make people not want to donate anymore. You know, people yeah. are like, bro, why am I going to donate if, if it's just going to go nowhere, you know? Because there's, in War Memorial, you have, dude, you have tons of pallets that's that's just not being moved and just sitting there and covered in tarps. And, you know, imagine what if you you didn't have much and you came and you gave something, a toy or just something, be like, hey, man, I love Lahaina, I want to give. And they just wrap it up and put it on the side, you know? It just, it makes people, it makes people feel like crap, right? And yeah like there's no guidance like right now there's just so much going on it's just they don't know what goes where um who to talk to here you know everyone's saying contact FEMA but from what I understand people that's been contacting FEMA they have no answers right um there's yeah. no like specific answers of where to go what to do it's very uh vague right a lot of a uh, gray area um but um yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, sorry, I'm going all over the place. With it, but <laughs> no worries. It's just so much to process, you know, so much going on. Um, so wait, when you guys are playing music at like the, sh it's like the shelter, right? And mm -hmm. just kind of bring good vibes and Red Cross kind of stepped in and said, oh, you guys got to stop. <laughs> they came in, they had pretty much told me like, hey, you know, shut this down. And I was like, you know, what's going on? Like, like, bro, you know, what's going on? So I just turn it down and I'm like, you know, I have permission to be here. You know, people are asking me, even their workers in their red shirts was like, I don't know, dude, that just, this dude just came up to me, you know, and you can tell they weren't local. They, they, they weren't local. Um, they were definitely from mainland. Uh, and he didn't really give me a clear explanation. He's like, yeah, we're going to shut this down. Okay, whatever, dude. So, so he goes and runs inside and I'm chilling. Right. And then another lady comes up and then she's like, can we make an announcement? And uh, I was like, yeah, there's a microphone there. And then I don't know who this little guy was. He ran inside just, just, just yelling at people. I don't know. But um, yeah, and then I, they made an announcement. The announcement pretty much, I mean, it was important. It was for uh, basically if you were missing somebody, it was to go get DNA swab for, you know, oh, you, you know why already. For a baseline, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they had people that they're trying to identify already. And um, yeah, after that, we started the music back up and I had a lot of friends that came, you know, donated They're like, hey, I was like, oh man, here we go. You know, so people <laughs> was coming and it was just great because- Yes, yeah, so it wasn't taking started... shots or anything like using the club or anything, huh? No, no, no. Oh, okay. The music, then the I music was why. pretty mellow. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing we a rage drinking, out there. <laughs> I just, I just had sodas, you know, like I brought sodas and um, people were happy. They're like, oh my God, it's sugar. Because, you know, water, right? They've been drinking water, like, the past, like, three days. Yeah. You're like, oh, my God, you have soda. Yeah, I got I got Dr. Pepper because uh, I always think Mike likes Dr. Pepper. And I'm like, I put Sprite and Coke in one cooler. And everyone's like, oh, can I take that? And I had a uh, Coke Zero, too. And the other one was Dr. Pepper. No, I took Dr. Pepper. I like Dr. Pepper. Whatever. You know, I was like, yeah. <laughs> but it was cool. You know, it was just cool. It's just a change of pace. Everyone's like, you know, thank you for this. And, you know, it just changed people's mood, right? I mean, you yeah. play, you play you know, 80s funk, you know, you play September, um, girls want to have fun. Um, you know, you play all this, this music that makes them happy. And um, it just changes it, the it's vibe. what we do, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's what we do. But I wish we could keep doing it. And it's just hard because like I said, there's so much, there's so much like people involved and, you know, people are saying, no, you can't do it here. We have to wait. Right. So I wanted to do a war memorial, but there, there's I'm waiting on a contact to see if I can do it right but that's the last thing on their mind whereas it'd be yeah. great to just show up set up shop and go you know but I'm not there to piss anybody off or you know so catch a case open it up <laughs> exactly yeah exactly yeah. um so this weekend uh we're gonna go to a fundraising event um Nalus, they're doing a bunch of bands and uh it's donation taking $50 a ticket they're taking donations 
Uh, I'm going to try to just check on the people that I'm housing. And, you know, there's a lot of people like one of our friends, she's housing, I think, was in nine families bro, in like a five bedroom wow. home. Bro, it is crazy, you know, uh, but that's the community getting together. You know, like people, you're sticking all these people together. And when they have one common thing, they just start talking to each other, you know, and they, they start, hey, I've, I've never seen you before. And it was just so cool, you know. Especially like when music, when you're playing, like we'll be talking to somebody and someone comes up and, then, you know, hey, where are you from? Where are you from? They just start talking to each other. And it's like, man, you know, even in tough times, you can still see unity, right? You can still see the aloha, you know, you can still see ohana. Um, yeah. And it's just, man, it's just such an amazing feeling, right? Um, but what what questions did you have? Let me, let me talk well, about what, that. For one, I wanted to know, like, um, since you have your own... Um, entertainment company for uh, like a lot of your weddings and and this would be the time a lot of the weddings are happening did you have to cancel any or um, um there were there were a few around. cancellations yeah there were a few um there was one that was coming up was uh i think next week and that got canceled uh then i think we had two more that dropped out because people were just not coming to hawaii anymore and yeah. that's something that I, I, I'm not sure. I think it was like uh, these big uh, influencers and movie stars were saying Maui was closed. Well, I work for hotel industry. And when you say stuff like that, you know, I, I get it. I understand why they're saying it, but it, it, it should be like a little more subtle, right? Because when that happened, our occupancy just dropped and all hotels, right? All hotels are like, bra. we went from like 75% to like 20%, right? And yeah. it's scary because that's how we make our money. I mean, look at COVID, right? Like COVID just, just killed a bunch of jobs. And if there's no tourists here, if there's no people here, then these businesses are going to go out and they're, it's already tough times. Right. Um, but I understand why they say that. So now that's why it changed to Maui is open, but you know, Lahaina is closed, you know, the West side is closed. Th and, does that um, include Kanapali or? Yeah, so what, what they're saying is there's only one way in and out. Um, well, there's two, actually. Kakalo side, right? The back side, which is very widely dangerous. And oh, you yeah. don't know the road. It's just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure you've been Bumpy, there. yeah. Um, you know, so big, it goes into Hana. Going. Yeah, uh, no, it goes in the back side. It, it's it's oh. uh, Wailuku, Wailuku side. And you can, it goes all it. the way I around. It. it brings you all toward on uh, the Pili side, yeah. Okay. Um, so it, it's, there's that way, but not too many people take it in the main road. So the main road right now is just so congested with uh with paramedics with fire trucks firefighter uh you know police and uh militaries here too so just there's just a lot of flow going in and out helping the community um so it's advised i mean there's nothing really there anymore you know like i i try to tell tourists because you know we still have tourists that stay at the hotel and they ask us and we're like look you know just just kind of respect what's going on and just leave the road open for the people that's trying to help the people in need right now because they yeah. just got power back um they just got water back and that's awesome to hear you know they're, they're really pushing to make it um livable so people don't have to come this side back and forth back and forth as frequent because of no power in the water right are so the, are I, the locals getting upset with the tourists that are coming or is, is there any kind of like, i think inter it's very interaction you know, I think it's very uh, uh, mix, mix matched. Um, I'm not taking sides here. People think I'm, taking, I'm not taking sides. I'm just speaking from general, you know, like my opinion, where there are people that are pissed off that is like, hey, you know, you shouldn't be coming to, to Maui because, you know, uh, it's closed. We're trying to recover from this, this devastation and this all what happened, right? But there's also the fact of we are making money from tourism, right? Um, we can still have access to to Kihei. There's still access to, you know, Wailuku side. There's not much to see in Wailuku side for tourist wise. But there's other parts. You know, there's still up country. Up country still open. A Kula area is still burning. Um, so I believe parts of Kula is still closed off. Um, but Wailea there's still things to do in Maui. Wailea is fine. Um, yeah. Wailea is perfectly fine. But you know, it's all like uh, ball high and bougie. You know, uh, but, <laughs> yeah. You know, Wailea is yeah, it's it's. <laughs> And, you know, you can't really do much. Like there's, there's the boats have, a lot of boats have burned down. Um, a lot of uh, scuba fishing, you know, all these vessels are burned down. So Maui is, it's not, I, I shouldn't say like very limited, but I mean, without Lahaina, it's, it's, that's a big part of it, you know, like yeah. 
And plus now the hotels are taking a lot of people in, but it, it's, what is there to do, right? A lot of places are running so short staff to get service. It's crazy. You know, like in restaurants, they're, they're hurting right now. So for when the tourists come back, it gives us jobs back. But if they come in too quick, it, it becomes like, oh man, you know, now we have to restaff for all this and we have to, which, yeah. which is a good problem, right? It's, it's money coming in. Uh, my opinion, I think we do need the tourists. I, I think we do need them to come and, and put money in Maui, right? To, to get things back to something sustainable. Because if we have nothing, you know, there's, there's, there's no money to come in. There's, these businesses have no, no locals to come and support it, no tourists to come and support it. I mean, the locals, a lot of them, they don't even go out anymore. A lot yeah. of my friends are just, you know, hey, we, we just eat at home. Like, we cannot go out to the bar. We cannot go out to movies. We just, you know, I'm, they're, they're helping. They're, they're helping. They're putting their time out. But they just can't do any of that because, you know, the money is all going toward these, these fundraising and donations. And same thing with me. You know, so it's hard to do something outside of, you know, even when it comes to eating, like, like, I don't know, maybe most, some people are supporting these local places. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know all the local places. I can't speak for all of them, but I know from my friends, um, they just go home because they're so tired. You know, they, they just, man, I just want to go home, just, just eat something quick and go sleep. So yeah. it's a chain effect, right? Like, you know, you, you don't have tourists coming in. Um, you don't have people, these businesses depend on those people. And it just it just hurts more, you know, from what's going on already. Yeah. Uh, that's that's just my opinion on it. That's just what I feel about it, you know. Um, so I know where you worked, where you're promoting and DJing at on was actually on Front Street, right at yes. Dirty Monkey. I uh, you know it as Mooses, the old Mooses. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dollar Drink Mooses. Yeah, those were some memories. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot of yeah. a lot of a lot, those a dollar lot of drinks crazy, add up. Yeah, oh yeah, twenty <laughs> um, bucks but, and you, bro, everybody's fucked up. <laughs> oh, so messed up, drinking other people's drinks on the tables. Yeah, I remember those. That's why I went when Oahu had their mooses. I was like, all right, you know, I know what to expect here. Like yeah. it was crazy, but you know that. Yeah, it was. Um, I was promoting for Dirty Monkey. Um, I was one of the resident DJs there, and uh, it was a great spot. You know, like uh, change of pace from Kia from from uh lava rock and yeah you know change of pace from the south side and it was definitely a cool crowd like you mesh tourists with uh with with locals really well right like i met a lot of people man i, I mean we've had like famous hockey players come in um we've had you know uh movie stars come in we've had local artists come in and it's just it's just different vibe right like i love it because it was open and it was just but i was a rager man that's that was that was lahaina knowing how to party that place yeah yeah and um it was great man and you know all the bars they come over there all the workers come over there and it was it was it was a great spot you know i'm i'm gonna definitely miss it um there was nothing really left i mean dirty monkey was the party spot and it was the place to be you know and i've talked to them i've talked to the promoter um you know i guess the owners are going to if, if re reinvest when front street comes back up so it will come back Dirty monkey okay. will come back that's, again. That's pretty cool. That's but good news, just, right? You know, who knows when, though? That, that's the yeah. big question mark <laughs> is when. I mean, yeah. the president's coming in on Monday. So let's see. You know, um, let's see what he says and what he does. It'll give us an idea of the term of how long it's going to take. You know, the process. It's going to answer a lot of questions, I think. Um, and uh, that's that's a good thing, right? Like, it, it gives us an idea of, of how we're going to bring Lahaina back to Lahaina to its former glory right but yeah <laughs> yeah and I I had a lot of like you said memories in Lahaina I my first trip with my family I remember going to Lahaina and Maui and um, having experiences with my family but for me the biggest was when I was older and we were running I don't care we did a lot of things in Lahaina and we went to those Halloween parties. It was, it was on like E network, like as the like top four destinations yeah. to go to in Hawaii. And it was, they closed the whole street down and it was like mm -hmm. pretty much just a rager block party. And yeah, I remember most of those nights, but Oh yeah, it was, it was crazy. We would have a lot of fun and, and I'm, I'm happy I have pictures from it and stuff, but um yeah it, it, i definitely had a lot of experiences there and 
knowing you getting to to um do things in Maui with you guys, it was just crazy to hear. And um, for one, I was stoked, really stoked that I got a text back from you and Mike as soon as I text <laughs> you guys and Haku. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And Moses, I even hit up Moses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he's yeah. down on this side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, business wise, what do you think your next move is gonna be? I know it might be too early to even start thinking about that, but what do you think for your business and for how you make money and take care of what you gotta take care of? How, what do you think your next move is? Um, entertainment wise, I mean. We just pretty much got to kind of go with the flow, right? Um, yeah. Still offer our services. But that's why here in, in Maui and Hawaii in general, that's why we all have multiple jobs, right? The hustle is real. Um, Definitely. So <laughs> we have something that supplements that. Um, my other friends that own just strictly entertainment companies, it's it's right now they're telling me it's it's pretty brutal. Um, because if you just depend on that, I mean, weddings, like, like weddings are probably canceling left and right. You know, especially the prices. I mean, the prices of, doing business here is very expensive. Venues went up, you know, like, like 20, 30%. And prices here for hotels are just, they're high, you know? Um, so I think in general, this, this event didn't do much more damage than already what was there as far as just Maui being a very expensive place to come and get married. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you, you got to really think about just a hundred grand. Like if you're talking about like 20 people, you know, most venues with everything is close to 100 G's, you know, Shit. for, for, you know, a decent wedding. And how are you going to, you know, how are you going to afford that when it comes to the hotel rooms? I mean, the airfare, the food, like, dude, I mean, rack rate for hotels at this time, I mean, the cheapest is what, 600 bucks, 600 to a thousand during peak season, right? For one room. And you're talking about a whole family, you know, so just in general, the entertainment uh, business is, is, is a little rough, I think, here. I'm, I don't know about everyone else, but we haven't had too many events. You know, at concerts, we've had, we're having them, which is, which is good, mostly at the MAC. Um, but as far as, like, weddings and stuff, it really has been dying down. You know, um, thinking about... So pr prior to even this... Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so prior to even the this um, incident, it has been kind of slower. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely slowed down a lot. Um, it's just because of the pricing. It's just so expensive. Yeah. You know, everything's so expensive here. I mean, over here, gas is probably more expensive than the other islands, right? Yeah. Um, always definitely pricey, bro. When the drinks are cheap and the island's expensive, people go drink. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so that being said, what about like promotion wise, are people actually looking to go out and kind of blow off steam and, kind of taking a break from all this kind of negativity and like wanting to go out or like what do you um, think you're, you're going to do about your promotion business with like nightclub stuff um i it's kind of hard to say it's a little hard i mean i have other places that um we used to dj at that uh you know we'll end up doing stuff i know uh love rock wants to start doing events again uh giving back to the community fundraising events so I'm going to work closely with them on that. And I just think right now it's, it's, uh, it's definitely, it's hard to say, you know, I mean, for me, like, I love to just have a drink with a friend to, to kick back. I would like to go out, you know, not to get stupid, drunk and rage, but to go out, drink, have a good time because what's going on, you cannot really change, right? You can't change what's going on. All you can do is adapt to it. Right. Uh, what is that? There's a saying, if you want to change something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude toward it, right? So, I like you know, uh -huh. I, I think I think it's, I'm not wearing my glasses, but kind of small, kind of smart in the way. <laughs> 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 um, you know, it, it, it's, it's tough. I, I think that they will come back. And I think it's good to have, you know, I'm not saying go out there and get drunk and forget your problems. I'm saying, you know, if, if you do drink, sit down, have a cold beer and just, just, think about things, right? It gives us time to, to uh, reflect, right? Even us, like we would stay at the bar, sit down, we have a beer, it makes us think, right? Um, and Sometimes, you get your mind or, off of it. Or we'd rage out and yeah, no, it's like, <laughs> forget the rest that of beer, the night. It's like, man, what's going to happen tonight, bro? That's why coming to Oahu, I'm always like, oh, <laughs> you got to oh, man. Yeah, it starts with one. It's like, oh, here we go. 
So my yeah. friends are like, bro, I hate going with you guys out there. And I'm like, why? They're like, bro, <laughs> I've never taken that many shots in one hour. I'm like, well, you guys visit us. Meeting. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> bro. Hey, we, we return the favor though. Um, oh yeah. hundred yeah. percent. <laughs> but it, it's, you know, I, I think the bars are going to start doing something as far as, you know, these, these spots. Um, there are a lot of bars doing fundraising events now, which is great. Um, diamonds, I think is another one. Uh, they might be doing something. I, I'm not too sure. I got to hit, I got to hit up these places again and uh, see if they want to do something, but I'm willing to donate my time. I'll DJ for free just to give back. Yep. You know, and um, you said you wanted us to work with you on some projects and, I already talked with DJ Hoppa and, and our company artist Groove. We're, we're um all in to, to donate time and help push definitely, it whatever definitely. event and try and um, we're gonna some try to, positive uh, energy to you guys. Yeah. Way positive energy. Put your <laughs> hands up. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> um it's uh yeah, I mean we're gonna uh, we're gonna be definitely Labarock wants to uh wants to do some some fundraising events, like I said. And um, I'm going to put that on paper and hit you guys up. And, you know, uh, thank you guys for always showing love. You know, we oh, really yeah, we love sure. Oahu. Um, all the, the memories and videos that we're like, man, I can't believe I did that kind of thing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can. <laughs> uh, yes. I know you, you've witnessed some of the stuff over there. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll definitely, we're, we're going to love to have you back on Maui. Um, I'll definitely keep you and everyone else in the loop once we get things more solidified. Um but yeah, I mean, as far as that, we just kind of go day by day, right? Like we just kind of try to figure out things as it goes and um, kind of just go with the flow. You know, if you try to fight it, it doesn't do you any good. You know, you try to think too far ahead, it doesn't do you any good. Yeah. So literally like this is day by day kind of thing. You know, even until cool. now, it's just. Yeah. And when, when we did get to work with you in Maui, we did, what what did you guys call it? The, ta the Oahu Takeover. And oh, we got, over, yeah. yeah, we got to promote at um lava lava rocks mm -hmm. with you. And my biggest thing was it reminded me of how Oahu used to be. Like everybody that was there was engaged with uh, uh DJ Hoppa with me, you, and and the moment nobody was on their phone. Like if you come to Oahu, everybody is like status. I'm in the VIP. I'm on my it's phone like showing so everybody. Much. Yeah. <laughs> Like everybody yeah. was singing, dancing, talking to each other. You barely mm. saw a phone out and it just made me feel um happy. It was like, wow, this is cool. This is this is what it used to be like. This is what it should be like. Because you go yeah. out to have fun and, and meet and talk and vibe out, not spend the whole night trying to show that people on Instagram that you're cool. Like nobody cares, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um Maui definitely had that vibe and it and yeah, it was it was cool to be not just see but to feel it again. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm I'm down. I mean, that for was it. that yeah. was kind of like what what we tried to portray here. You know, that's that's what I was yeah. taught. Um, you know, it's all about the people, and and it was just something like well, I love talking to people. You know, and I got into this. I used to be a quiet person. Yeah, surprisingly, right? Uh, people are like, oh, you never were quiet. Yeah, whatever, dude. But anyways, like yeah, you know, you're the best started, person to interview, bro. I just let man. you talk. I just, I don't need sorry, to I'm so this. sorry about that. Nah, I'm just playing. It's, it's it's the Filipino and European side, <laughs> yep, the two talkative good. sides, man. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it was just portrayal of just having fun, right? Like, like I didn't want people to care about what you dress. I didn't, I didn't want them to be like, "Oh, bro, that shirt is stupid." Bro, we had people coming without shirts, not supposed to, but they did anyway. <laughs> because it, that's just what the vibe was. And if they came in, people just rage, right? Uh, people yeah. could dress nice. And, you know, it was, our point of it was just a straight rager, right? We played the music, we engage with the crowd and just go, you know, yeah. just, just have fun and go. And that's what it's about. The night ends and everyone's like, bro, this was nuts, go home. You know, but I, I you know, I, I love district. I love what you guys do. I, I love, you know, is I, I can't say the calmness because Hoppa definitely rages it. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> you know? calm about district. <laughs> <laughs> you know they they read but i mean like more of like you know i get to dress up and i, I like district because that you know i can wear nice clothes we tried that lava rock bro we felt so out of place in the beginning oh yeah like we were in rock wear sean john and yeah. i was like bro screw this we just started wearing <laughs> shorts and like you know short shoes and shirt and just go you know um yeah. but it made it easy for us you know you don't have to think about what you gotta wear so everybody just has a good time like you talk to everyone 
and it's just everyone's like family you know and that was kind of what it was like at dirty monkey too you know everyone was just that's just molly in general like you said that's just molly's love right um it's definitely different when we have you guys here we love it man the energy you guys bring is something definitely different and yeah. uh you know there everyone's like oh bro those guys from oahu and like you know and then it's like <laughs> yeah you know they're, they're the cool guys right there <laughs> whatever it was, it was fun though and everybody was super cool like the um staff at lavas was very personable and and um welcoming and yeah it, it was just aloha and good vibes bro that was, that was one of my favorite nights bro we we had a lot of fun that time and Man, it yeah was we'll fun, definitely dude. like like to come back especially now if we can help um in a in a capacity where we can donate our time and kind of give back to you guys and Bro, and you know you're more than welcome to come district or come Oahu anytime. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know. I was like, I was like, oh, they're getting angry at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. No, we'll we'll come down. Um. I I I wanted to come down, and uh, I know you guys are doing fundraising nights, and you know, thank you for that. I I seen that, and I was like, man, that's amazing. Um, are you guys doing that all uh, every week or just uh, how it's many like times? Like a are digital you doing thing. That? Yeah. Well, okay, I think cool, they're cool. running it. The club is running it, and then um. Cool. Yeah, we're we're trying to get some other projects. We've been helping as much as we can, but I know you were telling me like the amount of time and and effort and just thinking about what happened is kind of putting a mm -hmm. mental strain on on not just you but everybody because I mean it's heavy. Like waking up and knowing like oh it's another day we're gonna have to be dealing with this and it yeah. takes a toll and and with how things are now mental health is being um brought to the forefront of something that's very real and very um much a problem in our society like how is mm -hmm. there been help to help people cope with what's going on and help people like even helping brad it's heavy on you guys just helping and you guys gotta take a break like how do how do you guys um try to regain mental stability after all this stuff is going down um to be honest with you you are right there's there's a lot of people we're talking to like i said the resort i'm i am the lead calls guy so i go around and talk to people you know like even for me it's hard but like you can go seek help all you want but i think the best help is talking right it's talking to people because you share the same vibe you share the same energy and <clears throat> it becomes where you can click right whereas a therapist is thinking like how can I fix this person? There's nothing yeah. wrong with that person. It's just they're trying to understand what's going on, just like you, right? But if you have two people trying to find an answer, that's greater chances you'll find the answer, right? Whether it be in comfort, the actual answer, whatever it may be, you you, you, and that person or people, or persons, whatever, whatever, you know, they, they can find the commonality and be like, you know what, you're right. You know, we'll get through this. And for me, it's talking to people, right? I, I, I obviously can't shut up. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, I just, that, that's what I do. I just, I, I, my thing is I love to talk to people and that's what I've been doing. Right. And just like that guy I talked to today, my guest, you know, I was so happy to talk and you can tell he was emotional, but you can tell like he wanted to talk about it. Right. Um, uh, like a couple of days ago, it was hard. Like even for me to talk about it, like I, I just, I just wanted to break down in tears and honestly, like, it's just so painful, you know, um, but if you don't talk about it, I think that it's very unhealthy because it's bottling up. You know, it's it's no one's asking you how you are. So some people think like, oh, no one cares about me, blah, 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 whatever it could be. Right. Um, and you don't know what people are going through, like like just in general. Right. If you talk about mental health in general, people don't, you don't know. I mean, they say the most saddest people are the ones that smile the most. Right. Yeah. Um, and the best thing is just talk to people. That's that's what I always tell people. Don't be afraid. You know, just like in a club, right? When you have a mic. So I'm always usually on the mic and I talk to people and they're like, you know, how do you do it? I'm like, you just have to own it. You, you, aside that mic, you just own it, right? You own the conversation and um, you, you make it so you are there for them, right? Like, 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 hey, I'm listening to you. What do you have to say? What, what can I learn from you? That, that's how I try to do it, right? And you just own it in the fact that you give them the stage, right? Yeah. You clap for them, you help them, you make a friend. I mean, it's it's just the best thing in the world. You know, um, it, it's just to deal with things. I think talking goes a long way. Just hear people out, right? You know, just like in Maui High, uh, Cassie, the girl that was entertaining uh, with me, she was talking to this lady for like an hour. 
you know, they just want to talk, right? And they feel great and they just forget about what's going on. And even if it's just for that one moment, that's the moment that you gave your time. That's a moment in life that you did something for that person that no one else did, yep. right? Uh, that's the way I look at it, you know, and some people are like, oh, what's the point? And it's like, well, there doesn't need to be necessarily a point. The, it's just a time in their life that you're a part of. Look at it that way, right? Just like weddings, for example. You guys go to weddings, right? You guys DJ, you MC it. Some of them don't even know our names. They just think, hey, the DJ killed it, yeah. right? You know, they, they don't know. But you were a part of that, right? You made that happen. You were the one that played the music. You were the one that got in an MC, announced him. Forever, you're going to be in those memories. Now, if they divorce and stop, you're still in those memories. But that's not the point, <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> it's it's you you're, you're there regardless. The good and bad times, right? Yeah. Um, our job is not to to destroy or, you know, we're not there to. I believe what we do, what me and you guys do, um, we're purely there for the people, right? Um, yeah. Our music and what we do makes people happy. It gets relationships. It breaks relationships, right? It does everything. It makes babies. <laughs> it, it's it, oh, sometimes a lot of babies, you know, man, that's why they come out more to drink because of that. But, you know, um, but it, you know, it's our, I, I believe our job as promote, promoters and our music is to give back to the world, right? Um, yeah. Everyone loves listening to music. Everybody loves um, hearing a song that they reminisce about, you know, it's like, man, I haven't heard that in a long time. You know, we make people happy and whether they know our name or not, doesn't matter because you yeah. are a part of it, right? People could say whatever they want. Oh, you suck as a DJ or you, you know, you suck on the mic. Hey, you know, take the stage by all means, take it, you know, but if you don't <laughs> yeah. want to take it, then, then the what am I supposed up. to say that? Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. <laughs> like, like, you know, like, okay, you know, it's, it's just, I, I just tend to not care what people think. And I try to tell people that, right? What's that? I That's the thing. Is like, it's like when you when you always um, are in in customer service and, and something. They're not gonna remember the food they ate. The um, they're not gonna remember exactly what songs you played or what what um, things you done for them. Is is they're gonna remember how you made them feel, and that's mm -hmm. what is like customer service or promotion or interacting as a um the business we are is it's not like you go district nobody's gonna remember like oh hapa played this song then this song then this song and this song and this yeah. song they're gonna be like oh hapa raging and made us all have fun and party they're gonna remember that feeling not the actual things that that, that we do so well, some some of them do remember like you know when you guys made me be the judge some of those girls remember oh, yeah. when i scored them till today <laughs> I was like, man, I forgot bro, I was, about that. You no, know, they remember, bro. They were frick, dude. They're like, that was you. I was like, oh my god, that wasn't me. Then they show me the video. I'm like, bro. I was like, I know they remember. What was that? The Halloween, remember. the Halloween contest, huh? <laughs> it was Halloween. Man, yeah. you guys are like, just like, no, no. I know we're like, oh, you know, we, sure need enough, a, they, we need one more judge. I'm like, got it, Sava. You gotta come up here, you man. Need to be a judge. <laughs> I was I was looking at I don't know who was next to me I think it was one of your guys boys I was like yeah. bro I don't know these people here but they're gonna hate me after this then we started giving people tens and the girl next to me she's like you can't do that I'm like well I don't want to create enemies I don't know these people they're never gonna want to get to know me then some of the girls still remember me till today I was like I didn't look look like I I was that's like, why I didn't I'm, do it <laughs> yeah yeah I figured I was like bro the criticism came to me bro. Well, like, if you have a that, Halloween like, party in Maui, I'll be the judge. <laughs> I'll be dressed uh, up so Halloween. no one gonna know who I am. <laughs> oh, I go, I go make sure they know. I'll be like, this guy right here. This guy right here. If you lose, just remember. Just remember. No, but you know, some people do remember, you know, and it's a good and bad thing, right? But if they do remember you for those things, it creates connections, right? Yep. You know, like sure. I, I made a lot of friends from district because of that, because of you guys. You know, I made a lot of friends out there. And, you know, I come back and they're like, hey, man, you're back over here. And I'm sorry, like, I don't remember all their names, but I remember their them as a person. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what it's all about, right? Bringing people together, even though you don't know them, they kind of know you. And, you know, it, like I said, it's, it's like owning it, right? You, they, you set yourself as the image to remember. Now, if people remember you, you can set the, the you know, you can set the standard of how people live day to day knowing you, right? Like, if yeah. you you know, help them like, Hey man, I'm having a hard day. They're going to come to you and like, Oh, you know, what do you think I should do? 
you know, they're going to become friends with you in the fact that they'll open up to you and you never know, right? Um, it's just good to connect with people in general. And I love that. There's there's a lot of people, they just come and talk to me, right? Even at district, like there's people that I would sit down by the bar and chill. You guys will do your thing. People just come and talk to me like, hey, you know, hey man, where are you from? This and that. And just start talking story with them. Some of them, yeah, like, that's how you yeah, meet all these chicks. Girl, or, <laughs> yeah, right. They, you know, you know how I meet them? They're like, oh, how do you how do you guys know them? I'm like, oh, uh, that's my boy. That's my boy. That guy DJ is my boy. He, he's not picking up my phone calls right now, but you know, that, that's my boy. Yeah, that's because knowing you guys, bro. Yeah, uh, you, you guys are like the you guys are like the Ferrari I gotta rent to become popular. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> well, man, you know, it, it's it's an industry. Oh, yeah, boy, it's, boy, it's a, no, no. Uh, is I was gonna say it's a it's a um kind of a a vibe that you you bring when you come and you know the industry so it's it's always cool when you're there and um yeah it's like you you're never out of place it's always fun and like when we were in Maui right walk around that club and talk to everybody and it was right it was super fun it's the same thing man yeah there were a lot of people there too they knew they knew who you guys were you know yeah that was a trip too I I seen some people I haven't seen in a while and yeah <laughs> Maui's cool I I like Maui but um well, it's crazy because you know like we've we've seen people we know who our people are not right like we know who's not from there and bro yeah. we've met plenty of people I mean girls guys freaking. And we're like, bro, we can tell too, because how they dress up, right? I'm like, oh, you guys must go party at district, huh? They're like, well, how do you know? You can just tell, right? Just like when when I'm over there, they know I'm not from there. They're like, you know, still dressed like in district attire, right? Like the, the, the dress code. And they're like, bro, you know, you're not from you're not from Oahu. I'm like, yeah, I'm from Honolulu. They're like, no, you're not from here. I'm like, how do you guys know that? You know, how do you guys know I'm not from here? I'm following the freaking dress code. You know, I, I, I look drinking local. a Corona and a Heineken. Yeah, like, bro, come on. Drinking no, you're not a from Heineken. Here, <laughs> Just like try to blend in, right? Like, I even rented yeah. a Tacoma to fucking fit in. Like, geez. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it's crazy, bro. They, they know their people, you know, and that that's yeah. great because, you know, it, it's a change of pace, right? Um and it, it's just, yeah, it, it's just part of the industry, man. It's knowing people, making people happy and doing what we do. Just just do the yeah. damn thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, man, we've been going for about an hour. Um, I just wanted sure. to give you our aloha and our love and, and let you know that we always um, thinking about you. And, and yeah, we were trying to get you on the show like before any of this happened. But now yeah, was, was a good time to. Um, Mike was like, bro forever i'm like i i know i know i know yeah but you came on and and i think this was maybe the the reason why we needed something for you to shed light on and i think hearing from somebody that was actually um seeing it firsthand and it's not oh some a friend of a friend who sent me this video is like bro this guy was there i know this guy he been experiencing things because of it i like talk to him because like I said, the social media and the news, and I don't know even know what's real anymore. And a lot of people on social media are using this as an opportunity to get some clout or, and it's, yeah. um, it's just, I don't know. It's just weird now. I, I, I figure I'll talk to you and let you tell your side of what's going on. And that's that, bro. It's real. <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, I really appreciate it. Um, If you have people that, you know, want to talk about it some hit me up and then i can talk to them and i don't know everything you know like this cast i hope nobody takes offense to it i i'm just speaking how i feel it's a little yeah. you know i can't clear my head exactly so i'm kind of just speaking freely um but i just really appreciate everything oahu does thank you guys always and you know maui's here we're gonna recover we're gonna be strong we're gonna be guaranteed you know we're gonna bounce back from this for sure yeah and it's all one love and bro we're one state it's still the same same ho it's all hawaii you know what i mean it's one thing about hawaii like whenever there's something they all unite i mean just look at freaking em tongi when he's running for like to win american exactly. idol a whole yeah. island united behind him that's just what we do and if yeah. even if it's in such a negative fashion we're uniting behind it to pick everybody up and that's one thing that shows our aloha and yeah it's just um the conspiracy stuff and the negativity and the anger is is real and i think with people like you that'll kind of 
take away some of that bad negative energy. So I'm always about that. And like I said, if you're going to do something and you need us there to help out, we'll be there. And I already talked with, with Hoppe and he's down. So mm -hmm. we'll figure out a time we can get out there and, and have some fun with you guys and, and um, hopefully raise some money and help as much as we can. Um, if people want to, if people want to see you on Instagram or get a hold of you, how can people find you on um social media and stuff? Um, just my IG. Um, you can just add it to the the information down below. Uh, yep. Sava underscore alien underscore junior. They're gonna mess that up. Everyone messes up my name. You know, <laughs> Sava, but then like it, it, it's easier just to yeah. <laughs> I'll put it on there. No, but yeah, just no find worries. me. Yeah. You know, if they have questions or want to help, um, let me know. And uh, I can guide them in the right direction. I have a lot of connections with people over here that that know, you know, where to do, where to give, what to do. Like, I just can guide them in the right direction. And, okay. um, you know, if they just want to talk about it, I'm here to listen, man. I'm here to talk too, obviously, which, you know, <laughs> but the hour's up. So, you know, yeah, <laughs> I don't um, want to take any more of your time. No worries. Sorry. That's perfect. And uh, when everything is done, when it's all settles and, Lahaina's back to booming and you're back on track. I still want to have you on and talk about fun shit because that's what I wanted to do months ago. And like our timing didn't work out and you coming on here this time, like because of this thing. And yeah, we, I definitely want to go back and do that stuff and bring Mike on with you. <laughs> definitely, Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. We're down, man. And like I said, if you guys ever need anything out there, get us up, man. Yep. I'm willing Some to help. Any Krispy you Kreme and your people want donuts? Oh, <laughs> yep. Got you, bro. Got you. Some might be missing, but I got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. And for us, it's the same. You can find us on Instagram, Above the Bridge Podcast, our YouTube channel, Above the Bridge Podcast, um, website atbpod.com, and my personal Instagram is Thaddy Daddy Hi. All right, man. Well, I appreciate Daddy, Daddy. you. Yep, fatty daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I appreciate that. you, man. Yep. <laughs> and thanks for taking time. I know you're busy. And like for you too, bro, I'm always here to talk. And if you stress him, bro, just call me up or fly down here. And you know, I'll, I'll put your yeah. mood in a, a different, I'll take yeah, away all the yeah. negativity. <laughs> Draw the stress in patrol. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Yep, Man. let me but know. No, well, I'll see you guys soon. I'll see you guys yep. soon. No worries. That'll Got be you. fun. Yep. All right, man. Well, shock us for the cameras. All right. Thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate you and God bless. Aloha. Aloha, bro. Take it easy. Shout out to the Artist Group Network. Aloha.